Hello, and welcome back to the Wicked Wild. We're out here doing wicked stuff, but not really that wild, because guess what? We're just a fucking podcast. I'm your host, Joe, as always, and I'm recording out of the small town of Phoenixville. Uh, got out of the Appalachians, too many moles. But you know what doesn't have too many moles? Our uh, requisite mole queen, Caitlin. Caitlin, how are you tonight? I'm good. You have to give a shout out to where I'm calling in from. What, uh, Cash Money's favorite city, Richmond? That's right. <laughs> I've always said if Ludacris doesn't mention your area code in the song Area Codes, your city ain't on the map. See, I thought he was just talking about hoes. Well, I mean, I'll give it to you there. Yeah. Oh, Joe. It's <laughs> 2023, seated. all right? Come on, wake up. <laughs> Listen. Wake up. I, I got nothing. <laughs> Rooming. Well... Those are the dulcet tones you of... You can't just uh, drop every word that you've heard on like an autostraddle <laughs> article, Joe. And coming out of the Windy City, we have uh, Joe uh, Joe Charnus. How oh. are you today? Oh, hey, I'm doing great. I'm very excited to talk about this movie. This is a, uh, I want to say like a leisurely stroll through my childhood development of... Uh, <laughs> of crushes so yeah i'm very very excited he's a big fan of hal mm. <laughs> which one's hal ah, that, that's a great question i keep thinking like biff because like oh, i just also yeah. see all of these characters or actors with their other roles yeah oh 100 percent. like that was the entire movie yeah so but and uh we have john out of detroit as well john uh, you, you're still uh, there. You, you haven't been uh, taken over uh, by, I don't know, like the, the, the government or, or what have no. you. No, no, that ended uh, like a long time ago and stuff. It's actually getting really gentrified up in here. I'm sure. Okay. Uh, I'm sure everybody's really excited with the right skin tone. So <laughs> realize we're going to get political right off the bat. I mean, Joe I was that... talking about government takeovers. So there's no government takeovers <laughs> when the rich people move in. Have you thought about opening up an Airbnb? No, no, I ain't got time for that. Okay, well, I mean, the, the, the breakfast or the the bed that you're opposed to? Could you just do one B? Yeah, I mean, That's I mean, true. yeah, if we're gonna do one B, the one B is gonna be breakfast because I ain't making anybody's bed. That would be nice, right? Like if you could get like a like an app where you can just sign up to like just <laughs> go to breakfast at someone's house, like just one breakfast. Yeah, Wait, exactly. you sign up to go to breakfast or where you invite people to come to breakfast? No, you find a house to go eat breakfast. That's... Like, oh, like I'm hungry this morning. <laughs> Let me check the Air B app and, you know, mm. see if anyone in my neighborhood is like hosting breakfast. I see. I see. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Two blocks down, they're doing waffles. Yeah. Whatever. But then you gotta like, like listen to like a Jehovah's Witness prayer or something. Patent so, pending. Put pat patent <laughs> pending on that. TM. TM Joe Charlie's TM. That's mine. 2023. Instead of ride sharing, he's meal sharing. Yeah, there you go. There's the tagline. Well, like all of this kind of gets into what we're uh, covering tonight, I'd say. Have you guys ever heard of uh, April Fool's Day? The holiday? Or the movie? Uh, the movie, Caitlin. Mm. The movie. <laughs> Oddly enough, both. Yeah. <laughs> Not to brag, <laughs> but both. I have heard of both, yeah. I feel like about three years ago, like at the beginning of the pandemic, we all just jointly decided like April Fool's Day is not a thing anymore because like jokes aren't funny. No, so like... <laughs> <laughs> Pranks are certainly not funny anymore. Yeah, right? Like I can't go into Target without like fear of death. Maybe don't <laughs> fucking spray me with a like a watering flower or something, right? Asshole. I still fake sneeze on people. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> It was you? I think I've seen uh, TikToks of you. I can verify. Can verify. Last trip with Joe Ferry sneezed on lots of people, especially the kids. Classic. I sn So last uh, well, last week we covered, or last episode we covered Cocaine Bear. Mm. And the three-year-old that was there, like he deserved <laughs> two sneezes and a cough. Well, we'll and I shit parents. you not, like... the three-year-old. Yeah. Mm. That seems like more of like the parents probably deserve that. Like the kid probably wasn't begging his parents. Like, <laughs> see the bear movie. <laughs> he meant Winnie the Pooh. 
I, I will stick up for the kid in the sense that they were able to really kind of, they, they were paying attention to the story. They kept mm. calling out the character names. They were following everything. I want to know, I want to see that kid in like a kind of like a VH1 special mm. where we go back like 18 years from now. I kind of see how they're doing after watching a couple of 11 year olds do a blade full of cocaine. <laughs> <laughs> Was yeah. three year old laughing at all the right points? <laughs> <laughs> a blade full. Uh, when I saw Megan, there was a little kid though sitting in the row behind us that kept going, That's Megan. So now <laughs> <that's>, oh, <Lord. laughs> I really enjoyed it. It was just like the right amount of funny, you know? That's sweet. Yeah. yeah. I would have choked that this... kid. No, well, yeah. <laughs> Megan? Both. Okay, sure. Why not? How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Still haven't seen it. Missing out. It's a lot of fun. Same. I don't know. I don't know about that. On the old Peacock, the unrated version, apparently. It looks way too much like that uncanny valley like face issue that uh Polar Bear Express had. Polar Bear, mm. the Polar Polar Express, right? <laughs> yeah. Megan probably would have been a lot more fun if they did have Tom Hanks in the, uh, <laughs> the role of the doll, right? Originally, originally that cast, that would be amazing. Yeah. Allison Williams did replace him. She was the second choice. Doing oh. the whole dance and stuff. Understandably, they should have gone with the first choice. Mm. But look, it was, a the- it, it was a theater watch, much like Cocaine Bear. So. Mm. Well, so yeah. you've, been you've been watching the sky, Caitlin? Oh. A little bit. Yeah. yeah? yeah. Well, what are you seeing up there? Well, seeing something uh, in the way of motherships. Motherships. Have you guys been following this? What? No. Or is, it, is this no. just a mole person thing? Probably a mole person thing. Mm. Wait, wait. Are we seeing mole people now? We're not. Okay. Yeah. That's all right. I mean, <laughs> TBD, your invitation to the seat at the table in the mole kingdom. Mm. Feels like a small table. Uh, I'm not going <laughs> to lie. I never have any idea what the fuck like we're talking about with the mole <laughs> thing. Like I never understand. You better just let it glaze over, <laughs> wash over you, and just uh, yep. Don't. Just take it's it all in. Caitlin, she she can't stop talking about her mole people and her mole queendom. Right. It's classic. Yeah. yeah. Nothing personal, and I'm speaking specifically to you, Caitlin, and not anyone else. But I feel like it's just something that started a long time ago. And now we're all uncomfortable saying like maybe it should just end. <laughs> <laughs> specifically to you caitlin all right well it's too late now because the mole queen has news to share it would just break your little heart if we said something at this point I, you said news not nudes right mm. i don't have nudes to share okay good Those i just want to clarify for the listeners not for free but for free i do have some news yeah so Again, so a while back, there was like some soft disclosure, right? A few months back, about a year or so now. And then there was like a little bit more rumbling. So they were like, oh, an unidentified flying object. And then they were like, maybe there is an alien. And then they were like, maybe there's aliens, plural. And now they're like, maybe there's a mothership. Hmm. So not only do we have little scouting UFOs, which they have dubbed Uamuamua, which is the Hawaiian term for scouts. <laughs> I did, did my they, research. Did these originate in Hawaii? No, they originated outside of our solar system. Huh. Yeah. So this there is a mothership with probe capabilities that's sending out these little scout missions, the Uamuamuas. Well, you, mm. you got a mothership, you're going to want to probe. <laughs> I, you're always saying that. So, has anybody checked with George Clinton? Does anybody get I'll that say, reference? Bootsy Collins, yeah. he's all about it. <laughs> I love George Clinton. Comes to I saw him. a fair amount. <laughs> I saw him in concert like years ago at the Smoking Groove store in upstate New York. A little fast. Nice. Thanks. <laughs> Joe was instrumental in making that happen, actually. So. What else you got, Kate? <laughs> Ooh, I'm one, one. That's, 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 that's the it? thing. Yeah. Okay. That's the news. All right. The mothership, that's pretty big news. <laughs> so, Ooh, I'm one, 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 one sounds kind of like, like a George Clinton baseline in the it back. It does, yeah. yeah. And then you have all these other little ships, and that's what we're looking at. We're not looking at just weather balloons. <laughs> no. no. What? Heaps. Yeah. 
the mm. pipeline has has increased quickly. Like I said, it was maybe some objects in the sky, maybe a weather balloon, question mark, question mark. Then they were like, maybe it's an alien. Maybe it's a fleet of aliens. And now they're saying mothership. So we're moving quickly. Who knows what's next? We got to shoot that fucker down. That's all I know. Keep your eyes on the skies. Really? Speaking of insanity. (laughs) (laughs) And pipelines. Uh, Did y'all see uh, Cam from a few years back? No. Yes. Maybe. Cam, the Cam Girl. Yeah, the Cam Girl movie. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, new movie coming out from her, How to Destroy a Pipeline about eco terrorists. Oh, okay. actually, it looks a, pretty damn good. This is a fiction movie, like a, yes. it's not a documentary. Well, it's like kind of like a how to, it's like a how to. Oh, okay, it's, like not an no, it's a fictional thriller. movie. Wasn't that the James Bond with uh Denise Richards? I forget which one that was. The oh, one. um. What's uh something about tomorrow? Tomorrow, tomorrow never, never dies. dies. Tomorrow never dies. But wasn't like the thing that they were like blowing up uh one of the pipelines? Yeah. So correct. It's been, yep. it's been done. But all right. <laughs> I have never seen any James Bond movies. Not a single yeah. one. Not a single one. Wow. Really? Okay. Okay. You you're missing uh Famke Jansen's thighs, and I feel sorry mm. for you. I do love a thigh. Famke. Mm. Mm. The best. <laughs> have I ever told my Famke story? <laughs> No, I don't think so. <laughs> on this show, have I ever told it on the Wicked Wild podcast that we do weekly? Um, uh, if you have, I, you I've may totally have done it on the trailer. When I uh, when I used to work in New York City, uh, me and a buddy of mine, we actually we were working on a, a website for Maria Sharapova and Sprint. It was like their uh, like sponsorship, and like literally, we would work like twenty four seven, like overnight, and at like three a.m. My lovely wife, Leslie, agreed to come in and pick us up because it was so late and we didn't want to deal with the bus. And we got stuck at the Holland Tunnel. And out of nowhere, this like black SUV just like jumps the curb, swerves around and just like turns and like heads the other way because they were sick of sitting in traffic. And I lean out the window. I'm like, just because you're famous doesn't mean that you can't, you know, wait and whatever. You, you don't have rules or anything. And I make eye contact with the driver. It's Famke, and she's smiling at me, and I'm like, you know what? <laughs> <laughs> that sounds story. like a fever dream. <laughs> so hot. I think we officially dated for at least like 14 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> My Famke story. Between parking lots and tunnels, uh, your your dating history has Oof. a lot to do with. Uh, don't get me I started guess. on the park. <laughs> 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 Every time that woman posts on like Facebook about her anniversary or something, I'm like, what the fuck? Why did you ditch me? How could you? <laughs> we should move on. <laughs> we? Or... <laughs> <laughs> well, All right, Joe, what else you got here? <laughs> well, speaking of sordid tales from people's histories, uh, that kind of gets into some of the movie we're covering tonight. Mm. And I, last time when we covered Cocaine Bear, I was the one that had to kind of surmise the show and or the movie. And so, John, I'm going to have a random question Ooh. for you. Mm. This way we can decide who does the synopsis for tonight's movie, April Fool's Day. Oh, so, John, boy. what you got? If you ended up at a Airbnb or some sort of like bed and breakfast uh, resort, but it's the whole murder mystery theme. For each of us here, how would you like to see us die? No. Oh. I thought usually, I mean, I would have imagined you'd give me choices here, but since we got to pick, like, I, I mean, like three no. options. No, he wants to know how. Okay, so yeah, uh, I want to hear the creativity. The creativity like, here. Okay, I, I'm going to go. With we've the been old... doing this show together as a group sure. for how long? You should know us well enough to know. I mean, how it's we been well over a year at this point. It, so, yeah. but it's been so fun. It feels like the first time, doesn't it? <laughs> certainly, certainly does. It's like everything is breathing fresh and new. My so, only request is that I don't go out like Judy from Sleepaway Camp. Okay. Mm. Now, do I have to use the kills from the movie, Joe? No. Oh, okay. All right. So I'm going to go with the old clue methodology here. Mm -hmm. Uh, Exactly. Uh, Joe, since you're just the salt of the earth, 
like my homeboy up the street. Wait, which Joe one? Joe Ferry, that is. Oh, I'm ah, gonna go. So you thought, huh? <laughs> Joe Charters was like, oh my God. I felt really <laughs> warm, uh, like in my Trust me, Joe, I got something special for you. I'm sure you Joe, <laughs> Joe Ferry gets a lead pipe. Mm. Okay. We study. I, I respect that. Get Blunt that and to the point. Right. Joe Charnus, he gets the fancy one. He gets the candlestick. Oh. In the yeah. reservatory. Oh. <laughs> the I think day. I saw a uh, documentary about that. Sorry, I haven't done that since college, I, uh, John. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Caitlin, you're just going to get the rope oh, in I the like lounge. That. Nice. She's All right. No. Lounge. Uh, I, I like it. I like it. And uh, because of all of those gruesome ways to die, uh, Joe Chartis is going to uh, synthesize right. the movie for us tonight. So tell us what we watched for tonight's episode. Uh, I mean, the good thing is it's a fairly straightforward concept here. So it's not, you know, um, I'm not going to drag it out. Uh, so April Fool's Day, 1986, a uh, little personal history. I've seen this movie I countless times, uh, directed by Fred Walton, uh, who you might remember from such things as I Saw What You Did, a uh, TV movie. Uh, one episode of Alfred Hitchcock Presents <laughs> um, and a bunch of other stuff you may have never heard of. Something called Homewrecker, which uh, was also a TV movie. I want to check that one out. Um, but anyway. It follows uh, Muffy, who is kind of our our main character, Deborah Foreman, uh, who you might remember from Valley Girl and a handful of other movies uh, that I, you know, enjoyed when I was a kid. Waxworks uh, was another big one that she was in uh, that you'd probably recognize her. And the whole idea is I think they're on like summer break or whatever from college. It's It's a group of friends and they're all gathering at Muffy's cabin on this kind of remote island. And. Muffy decides she's going to play some April Fool's pranks and without getting into like spoilers or anything like the whole idea is that there's pranks going on throughout the uh, the island. Uh, But some of these are real murders and people are dying and we're left trying to figure out what uh, what the fuck, Muff? What's going on here? Um, What the fuck, Muff? (laughs) And yeah, so the the cast itself is amazing so deborah foreman you would recognize deborah goodrich you'd probably recognize also i remember her from just one of the guys she was like the love interest of the gentleman who is actually also in this movie uh in place Chaz clayton roner um he's kind of the the main guy in just one of the guys we've also got amy Steele plays kit she is from one of the friday the 13th i think part three part two part two okay um, and then, oh, who else? Tom Wilson plays Arch, and you'd remember how it was Biff Tannen from all the Back to the Future movies, and then, you know, a bunch of others. So it's what, about like six or seven people on this island. They're staying in this like beautiful house, um, and they're there for like a weekend of fun, but things turn deadly. And uh, yeah, yeah, that, that about sums it up without getting too spoilery. But as always on every episode that you've ended up uh, having to do this random synopsis, you you, you crush it. Mm. It's it's why you're the MVP here. (laughs) Unlike you, Mole Queen, who's been quiet over there dealing with your mole people. Been keeping them in line. You want me to give my uh, my thoughts on this movie? I want to hear your thoughts, yeah. But I want to make sure they're your thoughts and not some sort of weird creature that you've been communicating with or I speak for I, all the mole people usually, but on this one, I might it sounds way too sexual. I'm not, <laughs> like, not gonna lie. I, uh, I feel like the mole people might revolt. I, I, I'm not like a huge fan of this one. I don't have a ton of nostalgia for it. And it kind of reminds me of the nights that I'm super excited for the last drive-in. And I'm like, so hype. I'm ready to go. Joe Bob is like laying down great zingers darcy looks hot and i'm just like ready to go and then the movie starts and i'm like (laughs) because there's so many characters (laughs) i can't keep them straight i don't have the associations that joe charnus just made oh so damn right you don't (laughs) (laughs) who could who could uh so i had a hard time like placing these characters i wasn't super invested in them i like the idea 
I like I like the concept of April Fool's pranks turning deadly. I don't really care for the end where we find out. Are we spoiling now? Spoiling. Oh yeah, fuck it. Who cares? I think it's going to be impossible to kind of talk about this yeah. without the fact that it's a spoiler. Yeah, yeah. and it's yeah. yeah oh, coming up on forty. Thirty years. Forty years. Forty years. Yeah. Almost forty yeah. years. Yeah, Jeez. ma'am. Yeah. Uh, I just I'm not, I don't super care for the end. I don't know. This doesn't really land for me. Hmm. All right. Well, John, what yeah. let's say you? This is my first watch ever on this one. Never saw it before. And I feel like I've watched tons of 80s ones. This is this one I've kind of missed. Um, I was very confused through like the middle portion. Like there's like some random references and people get really upset, like the abortion thing, which was a total loss. I mean, like, where did this come from? Totally confusing. And makes no sense. I didn't understand the motivations. And then it, but what was actually kind of nice is at the end, it all kind of came together. And I was like, all right, that was actually kind of fun. But watching it again, I would probably enjoy it more. But the, okay. um, yeah, the, I would say the end isn't great, but it is weird to watch a horror movie where no one actually dies. Mm. Yeah, that's my, that's my thing. So is and it like, horror? Well, and I really like love Clue movies. almost. Of this era, like Blood Rage, and like in Blood Rage, we have the evil twin thing happening. I'm like, fuck yes, like lean in, go for that dumbass trope of evil twins. And in this one, it's like, man, it was fake. And then the other shit was fake. That's not a fan. Her name was Muffin. You had to know that they were different because of their different hairstyles, Caitlin. You're not paying attention. I wanted them to be real. (laughs) Team Buffy, you know what I mean? Isn't it like Bort in the. The Simpsons, where they do the evil twin <laughs> thing. Yeah. Yeah. Bart and Bart. <laughs> yeah. That would have been nice, but no. Just little no, makeup and bad hair. Short for abortion. You know, when I was teaching the uh <laughs> 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 they would come over the uh announcements between periods and ask certain kids to come to the office for whatever reason. Sure. And there was a kid who's Where's this going? <laughs> <laughs> whose name was Elijah. And no. the last name was Borchon. Oh. And they would call for Elijah Borchon to come to the, <laughs> to the front office. And this kid was like, Miss Grant, why are you talking about abortions? And I was like, I think it's somebody's name, kiddo. I'm like, oh, that's rough. <laughs> wow. Wow. Anyway. You most go, or... <laughs> what do you guys think of the movie? <laughs> Hmm. Joe Joe Charnus, get yeah. us out of this just disgusting pit of whatever Caitlin drew us into. You. So I'm I'm probably coming from the other side of the fence. Like this was a like childhood rental for me, like probably around when it first came out on VHS and like loved it when I was a kid. Like it's probably a yearly watch, not like a you know, a Halloween or like a specific time of year, but like the wife and I just end up kind of popping this on randomly. Not a uh, specific time of year. Yeah. Like just, you know, it's, it, you know, on like a random weekend where we want to watch okay. like a eighties horror movie like this, this, this will be okay. on the list for sure. Um, And yeah, like all kidding aside, like Deborah Goodrich and Deborah Foreman, like two like childhood crushes. So like every time we watch this, like I, it's like I get giddy and just laugh at, <laughs> at the like you know, how they made me the man I am today. Uh, But I get the criticism, like specifically the ending. Um, I think the biggest kind of gripe I usually have with it is there's a lot that happens in this where there's like a single person by themselves. So like, why are we getting like the theatrics of it? Right. Or like, also, if you think about it and now like completely spoil the end, but like there is so much room for this thing to go sideways. Right. Like, Because the ending where like Muffy and kind of Kit are having their thing, like for all intents and purposes, everyone on this cast thinks there is a murderer. So like, why wouldn't you like attack the person that you end up thinking is the murderer? Like people really could have died, (laughs) right? That would have made me like it a little bit more though. Yeah, exactly. That could have been kind of like a fun twist where it turns out, oh, this is fake. We were just kidding, bro. Yeah, we actually killed someone. Yeah. Yeah. Um, And then also when you think about like, they're using like movie grade like props and stuff in this and it's supposed to be just like kids goofing around so it's it's a little hard to believe but it's also a 1986 movie and you kind of have to you know leave that you know by the side of the road when you dive in no, I, I like it i uh i had similar feelings to uh joe charnus where this was 
like growing up you in the video store and it's one of those iconic video ca- like video covers um yet i thought i had seen it and i never did until mm. this recent watch really wow that's kind of shocking i know see people get shocked by that but there's plenty i haven't seen other than my weird shit dude like yeah Yeah. weird shit yeah but if someone was like what are the odds joe has seen this like campy because it is campy i like the campiness what are the odds that joe ferry has seen this campy i'd be like oh 100 yeah yeah Yeah. it is like a a horror stable especially if like you get into like the the 80s stuff like i feel like definitely what we're saying is we're really disappointed buddy like, I'm okay. Sickened is probably the word I would use. Like, not so much just disgusted. Disgusted. Like, you know. I, I I take all those feelings and I, I just shove them back down and I rewatch Antlers because that is just uh, the show's. Uh, it's our favorite movie. Yeah. It's a fucking great movie. Yeah. I've never seen it. And nobody can say otherwise, which is like the nice thing about podcasts because once you say it, it is history. It's on. It's on. Uh, it's on the record button. <clears throat> uh but i have my issues with the movie uh the lack of gore or like the way they approach the kills i thought was uh like from a viewer stance before you know what the twist is it, it it's all cutaways like the movie could have been pg-13 mm. and in fact it wasn't until afterwards i i found out there's a swedish cut of the movie that they cut out all of the kills so people just start randomly disappearing and super fucking confusing. Wow. <laughs> I already felt I want to watch that. Oh, God. I'd say this was like a, I feel like a Sunday matinee or like this was on basic cable oh, yeah. a lot too. So oh, totally. It's super easy to turn this into like a PG or PG 13 because, you know, a lot of the gore you can just completely cut out. And even like with the, uh, like what you expect from an 80s slasher, the, uh, the sex was. Other than that being like weird limb positions that made me think yeah. of the shunting, uh, there's no nudity. That was, bizarre. that was like a really intense flex, and like literally speaking, flex. No, and I, I, I somebody that has a bad back. I don't know if I was upset <laughs> or just jealous. Joe, I think you know, maybe take some gym classes or something. You know, like yeah, I, I think need yoga. yoga. We have a new yoga studio up the street. Yeah. Yoga studio. Physical therapy, man. It's like it's those, uh, what studio, are they call, like, they call it like when like your kid's trapped under a car or something, like you like can lift the car up, like you get like in the heat of the moment. A surge of flex. adrenaline. Yeah. Like, get those can, legs back, baby. Things can flex and bend when uh, eroticisms are involved, Joe. You never know. I did it twice quote, quote, and now I'm episode. super in debt. <laughs> a. <laughs> but yeah, the sex um, was interesting. It also was a pretty pretty important part of the movie like mm. plot wise it was uh, we spent a lot of time in bedrooms yeah, yeah southern but... guy what's up with that he's like talking about plowing fields about like he knew i want to plow your knew... field yeah. i can't remember the deborah's but one of the deborah's was banging the one dude with the crazy flex position he's like yeah i still want to get up on that i was like okay That's man sad. can't be doing respect that. no not respect that's somebody else's lady but was she? She seemed like she was open to pretty much everybody that was there. I don't think she was like committed. Like I was just surprised he was open to it, like so openly. Like not not a southern know? gentleman. No, it didn't seem. They all seemed very like you know. I'm well, just they're like the literal worst age of human being, which is college yeah. aged. <laughs> so. mm. Teenagers are probably slightly worse. Depends. We we say this in the <laughs> Zoomers years, and it, it, it's all right. Um, I I do have a question though. Like, did so he was supposed to be what a farmer before, right? The southern who guy. We, who are we talking about? Harvey. Har- Hal. Uh, Hal. Hal slash Hal. Harvey. Right. All right. Yep. Yeah, I, I can't go by his given name. I have to go by Hal. <laughs> Was it? Uh, I so, honestly did not pick up that he was supposed to be a farmer, but that doesn't mean I, anything. I thought he was supposed to be a farmer, and yet this guy's like dressed up like a uh, young Republican the entire time. He, he definitely is. He was angling old Muff to get on her uh, father's payroll. Don't like how you said that one bit. <laughs> yeah. Angling old angling Muff. Old Muff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, he, he was like every opportunity was like... Uh, it was like how Bob Vance is like, Bob Vance, Vance refrigeration. Like every opportunity he had, he was like, how? I'd love to be, you know, I'd love to talk stocks with you. 
Good old Bob Vance. Just looking at the rest of his. Uh, he was on It's a Living three episodes. Anybody ever watched that with uh, Ann Jillian? That was a good no. Show. No, never <laughs> even heard of it. None of those words. Speaking of sense. childhood titillations, <laughs> Ann oh. Jillian, come on. <laughs> And oh. Jillian, now I got. So I, I cut. Yeah, I, I got lost in. And Joe, uh, you had alluded to it. The director's filmography, because mm. I feel like it's somewhat up your like uh, your wheelhouse. I all of his movies, I feel like went on syndication on Lifetime. They're all yeah. stalker movies. Yeah, for sure. Like it does, and it looks like like in the earlier days of like Lifetime esque movies, or like very much what was um. Night of the Scarecrow, like in that vein, like big time, like yeah. A lot of when, those, yeah, for sure. When they're doing fun made-for-TV movies, yeah, yeah. Like trapped, and I saw what you did. Like I'm feeling Lindsay Lohan's trying to get like the rights on all of these movies <laughs> at this point. <laughs> Good for her. Uh, did you guys have a like? So the kills were a little weird. Like you had mm. the the fairy kill. Which I guess we're calling that a kill, which is uh, the the accidental death. Uh, what was your favorite kill of the movie? That one was maybe the gnarliest because it seemed the most real to me. For sure, yeah. It ripped his face off. Yeah, the, he comes up looking like fucking Jason. Mm-hmm. It's true. The stinger uh, the throat slit where the, she was freaking out, and obviously she didn't get her throat slit, but she was convinced that was pretty good. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that is probably always been my favorite too. Like. It generally freaked me out as a kid. Joe Ferry, so, question for you. Oh, yeah. A lot of water deaths in this. <laughs> you just not, trying to get me to say water? I'm not I? trying to get you to say water. I'm trying to relive some trauma that you've been through that I know that you went through. I know oh. you don't like the water. <laughs> so let's get, let's get that out, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I've been on the record about this. Like, yeah. I just died as a kid. In the uh, water. In the water, yeah. So, so I fell through a frozen lake. Yeah. So, oh, my God. Horrific. Yeah. We have a well like near drowning with heads mm. floating in it. We Correct. have a boat smashing up against you, like smushing you against a dock. We yep. have the one guy like floating under the dock, like dead in the boat. What were, were was this? So, so I didn't think the guy that triggering? floats underneath. Yeah. So I thought that was uh, he had already been killed, but the killer was just floating his body underneath yes. while they're getting yeah, like it on. Yeah, something. just like as a little first like, off, gotcha. Yeah, exactly. Like, uh, I and I have questions also about that sex scene because there's like a decent gap between all the planks. <laughs> yeah. Like, I feel oh. like you're gonna be hitting like a, a, like a little bit of a rough. I have time. questions. I like your about knees would get fucked up, like on those like hitting Rob's like sexual chemistry to begin with. Like those two were the most depressing. Like, I would spend this entire trip complaining to other people about fucking kit and rob bringing the mood down because like is he the one that's like well i'm just gonna be a tv mm, repairman yeah yeah okay yeah so that. depressing and he by the way was the uh the hot uh student from summer school who ended up saying, being summer school a stripper yep yep wow bringing yeah. it all back god damn wow yeah, yeah that's a great movie exactly yeah well i did yeah. not put all that together but you know he was a total drag and i would have been like <laughs> like I'm gonna be a repairman. <laughs> I couldn't stand him. I don't but, understand. Like, how did she mistake that he was gonna go become a doctor? But then, like, he got some like shitty review from like his guidance counselor or something. Like, where did that mix up happen? So that's actually how I met Laura. I was like, <laughs> I, I told her, I was like, I'm on my way to be a doctor. Yeah, <laughs> and then I ended up becoming huh. a, uh, a a plumber. But it's really a doctor <laughs> of pipes, right? sure <laughs> sure <laughs> just a pipe doctor baby yeah exactly she's like oh he's gonna be a gynecologist here i am <laughs> putting <in> a sink. <laughs> I lay the pipe and oh, then i'm gonna Jesus. check it <laughs> <laughs> what but i never got an answer for you joe was was this was, were all these water dr- deaths traumatic to you no, nothing in this movie was traumatic, other than the fact that I didn't know who people were sometimes. Like, yeah. like and the callback to that final uh, fake uh, knife slitting. Who was that lady? Was that the abortion? That was Nan. Yeah, that was Nan. Yeah. Who, by the way, also like pretty high on the like unenjoyable to be around list. Was she oh the one God, that was like, who told you? Who? Yeah. What did the boys tell you? Was that her? Same lady? Yes. Yeah. Okay. That was yeah. her. 
Okay. And what's with the, the women dressing like they're day? 50 when they're in their 20s? It was, there was a very, especially Muffy, there was a very strange contrast between like some scenes where like she was dressed up like you would expect a Muffy from the 80s to be dressed. Right. And then the next scene, it's like, I sat in a steam bath and did, like didn't bother brushing my hair after. Like she was either like all in or like <laughs> fuck you guys, I'm on vacation. <laughs> <laughs> Which, so, totally I, her parade. Like by all means, like she's there to relax. It was just there was a lot of contrast. I think that was them just trying to what uh, differentiate between like oh wait this may be Buffy Buffy's hair. Little crazy, doesn't really care about herself. Oh, the evil twin have... weird yeah. sort of plot. Oh, exactly. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Nan looked like she was like a 50 year old librarian hanging out with a bunch of 20 year olds. Yeah. Yeah. Nan did feel very out of place. Like, even to the point where I was like, is Nan like the housekeeper or something? Like, is <laughs> I was she... like, is she the aunt? Like, I... yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, I the like dead they... mother. Like, <laughs> how they treat her when they first meet her at the, uh, the ferry dock and they're like, try to get her like luggage on and all that. And they start talking to her for like maybe 10 seconds. And then they decide not to help her at all and just leave her luggage right there for her to carry on herself. It was weird. realistic. Look, yeah. Been there. Like, been there. <laughs> <laughs> like real weird dynamic of like friendships here. Like no one really oh, yeah. likes each other, including yeah. the couples that are fucking. Yeah. I just, yeah. Yeah. No one really cares for one another. So no. therefore, is this the most realistic 80s slasher ever made? It's a realistic, yeah. like, have you ever done, like, a beach week with your friends? And you're oh. like, get me the fuck out of here. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. They kind of jump over, like, the first two or three days where it's fun and yeah. jump right to, like, day five where you're like, I'm done. Like, I, I hate can't. all of these people. I, I, I can't do this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Death is the easy escape. Jeez, Joe. It's true. I'm, listen. <laughs> Has anybody else uh, played Switchblade, whatever the fuck game that I, was? That's one of my notes. Like, what the fuck is this game? Like, and you win on the first round because he fell. I was very confused. And then immediately, uh, what the hell's her name? Uh, Nikki goes over and starts sunbathing on like old wood. Sure. <laughs> like you do. I mean, got a tetanus sunbath. Yeah. Yeah. It was very, the, the, I was the, baffled like before they even got off that, that little boat. Well, when you were younger, Joe, and you watched this, like, mm. and you saw them throw in this knife and then like, oh, we're going to play this, whatever. Did you realize, oh, so this is what older kids do? Like, This is, is what you do when you go to college. You play the Switch Glade game. And <laughs> years later, I went and I never found out. And, you know, it broke my heart. I, I remember walking across the stage at college and getting my diploma and asking the <laughs> dean, when do we play the Switch game? <laughs> you <laughs> whispered like, it to him and then you got... Put in cuffs and dragged off. The he like leaned over. He's like, "Oh, you've seen April Fool today too, right?" <laughs> it's not a thing. <laughs> and my he's parents like, just you wouldn't believe of how often I get this yeah. question. Joe my parents just have pictures of me like walking off stage, like with my head down, like four years wasted. I got nothing. <laughs> not one fucking switch switchblade. Not one. <laughs> I think well, that's where parents... I got confused and didn't stop being confused the rest of the movie. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, the movie does that. Yeah, you kind of also have not to super go. bright. So I, I was just like, oh. I do think like, and because I have seen this, you know, for years, and like when I was young, you kind of have to watch it through the lens of like '80s rental on a Friday night, goofing around, like not really expecting much in the way of plot. Like, I think it's tough to watch it for like a podcast or a show where you're like reviewing it because it's like you're thinking critically of it and. In reality, I doubt they put much thought into this. Like, fuck it, let's just get some of these people naked, and we'll have some murder, and we'll have like a fun twist at the end. And like, that's that's more than most of these movies do, you know. But they're wrong. It's not a fun twist. It's a, it's yeah. a big old letdown. I mean, it's totally the producers from like Friday the Thirteenth series. I mean, you could oh, tell yeah. like like his hands are all over this. It's yeah. like let's do a Jason Light for like cable TV, and we'll bring in that Biff character and. <laughs> Well, it does. It almost does feel like the twist was not the planned idea yeah. until like halfway through the movie. Right. Because, again, there are a lot of things that happen where it's just one individual. And it's like, well, why would we go through this whole thing when like it's not really relevant to like the final kind of, you know, what what we get at the end. 
I mean, the better twist would have been if Muffy would have told them, this is my plan. We're going to do this Airbnb or it's back then just B&B with a murder mystery. Let everybody know we're going to do a dry run and then start actually killing people. Yeah. That would have been a better horror movie. Mm-hmm. I, like I think that. nowadays though, they would call that a soaking run with the uh, Zoomers. I have no idea what the fuck that is. I don't is. know what that means. Either. I'll let y'all Google that that term. Let that soak soaking. in. Soaking let that soak run. in. I mean, if it's it's in reference to the uh, act of soaking, Joe, I'm f- I'm familiar with that term, and it is fucking weird. But in the way Joe is like silently laughing not at me, oh, <laughs> I'm gonna Google oh, come this on. stuff. I'm not All right, fairy. <laughs> blow Char news his mind. Explain what soaking is to him. It sounds familiar. The act of making someone completely wet. I mean, done. Okay. Oh, that's the actual. <laughs> I, I, need you, I need you to Google soaking plus Mormon. But not yep. so. Oh, I do know this. Yes. Okay. All right. That's <laughs> Your eyes uh, lit up. That was very fun. Yeah. Okay. So, now I remember. This gets, this is a full circle back to uh, actually my most like uh, a horrifying possibility of death via oh, what? water would be via soaking like that. Yep. I'm going to let Caitlin, Caitlin knows exactly where I'm going with this. And it's the mole, the mole people consciousness. <laughs> Are you joining in the kingdom? I'm, trying I'm to get... not. No, oh. I'm not. No, I'm trying to Sorry. piece this together. Like, what the hell? That what are you be? talking about? Continue. Are you talking about dying by climaxing, Joe? <laughs> <laughs> I'm dying by. I'm talking that about dying by somebody else's climax. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> a hero's death works. <laughs> yes. <laughs> We gotta go. A hero's death. <laughs> I want to talk about an erotic thriller. Sounds like Joe's uh, crazy fantasies over there. <laughs> and speaking of crazy fantasies, because we're we're covering this movie and all this, and the movie is based around fantasy, uh, but it intermingles reality. We're going to actually announce for I guess the first Ooh. time our first meetup is coming up. Awesome. I can't what? wait. Are, 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 oh, yeah. are, you, are you ready to lay it on these people? Okay. And Joe Charnas has all the details. The yes. for... <laughs> Am I on another podcast where they're making big announcements and I know nothing about it? Because <laughs> this hasn't ended well before, Joe. I'll tell you that right now. <laughs> <laughs> I've walked before and I'll do it again. <laughs> Well, before Better you better tread across. carefully, fairy. Tread carefully. <laughs> I was just trying to say, like, we, we'd have a meetup and we would all like it together, and all of our fans, Get all the mole soaking. people would be there. <laughs> I don't know if they're going to be fans after that. I'll call. I call jumper. I don't even know. What, oh, yes. For are soaking. Like, okay. Yeah. I, I don't want any part of this anymore. I'm out. <laughs> How rude. I would be such an <laughs> asset and an ally to the whole thing. Fuck you, man. <laughs> I'm so confused right now. <laughs> Welcome to the April Fool's Day review episode. Uh, yeah. I April think this is our Fools. best episode yet. Can we talk about Weekends the down. ending song and the credits? <laughs> so the ending song's amazing. Jerry you know Whitman. It? I looked up the, the like I looked up and I would try to like track down. He's done songs for like Annie, but I don't think the original Broadway one. Like <laughs> he's got this amazing, like sort of 19, you know, twenties or thirties like voice about him. Uh, but there's not much like info out there. I he's there's no Wikipedia page for him. Broke my heart. You should write it. Yeah. <laughs> I should write it. <laughs> <laughs> Record it. Put it out there. Yeah. Resurrect so, it. It's definitely one of those songs that as soon as it comes on, like I kind of sat up, was like, oh yeah. Like I felt better hearing the song than I did actually in like the final scene of the movie. Mm. It does not fit the movie at all. Like it no. kind of pops away. And I get what they were going for. Like it's, it's very like ragtimey, whatever. Like, oh, it's April Fool's. We just had a goof and like here's this. But like it just it does not fit at all. I mean, that being said, I'm all in. Unfortunately, it's not on Spotify or anything. Like, I don't think the song exists. I actually was trying to find it before uh, we started Same. in order to have Same. it playing. You too. Yep. Kind of remind me of Slumber Party Massacre too. 
Mm. It's just, it's just yeah. like a total, like, what? What did I just watch? Except you can find that entire album on vinyl, which is like something. It is yeah. something. Wow. Yeah. There, there's your Domino's mo- money. Domino's? Should we wrap this oh, yeah. up or what's uh <laughs> what else we got? <laughs> Real quick, I mean, let's... the uh the killer from Slumber Party Massacre 2 is uh-huh. the heir to the Domino's. No, like that fortune. would be Little Caesars, my friend. He's from Detroit. Is it Little Caesars? Oh, Illich. Ah. The Illich family. John yeah. just wow. dropped some local knowledge. <laughs> well, that happens oh, every episode here. Uh, uh, yeah, every just always just pulling shit out of thin air. John, John knows his chain pizza. Like, yeah, trust me, I don't miss, I don't miss a meal ever, Guys, especially pizza. Fuck, fuck Mary Kill, Little Caesars, Domino's, Pizza Hut. Oh wait, uh, what about Papa John's? Fuck, I don't know. Hold on. Mm, mm. I mean, I, I just, mean, I, I think I we're good without Papa John's. I would kill Pizza Hut, wow. marry Little Caesars, and fuck Domino's. Is crazy bread involved? Because that's always that's the, whole, the deciding. Yeah, of, yeah, yeah, yeah. Then yeah, Little Caesars all the way. Killing Pizza Hut though. Wow. Well, yeah, I mean it's fine, but it's past its prime. That's for sure. It ain't the eighties anymore. I know it's, it doesn't look the same. Doesn't feel the same. Doesn't How taste many the same. books do I have to read in order to get my personal pan pizza? Yeah. At you pizza know what? Hut? Fuck, Too many. Fuck, fuck the elitism of the Pizza Hut book rewards program. Mm. Little Caesars, like, son, wow. just give me five ninety nine. You get yourself a large yeah. pizza, not that personal bullshit. And the Little Caesars in my hometown had an icy machine, but you could fill your own. Really? So, like, yeah, it was like all like. It was like a whole new world. Are right, most of them mix really and not no. at, not at that day and age. Yeah, I was no. gonna say back in the day, that was like you got to touch the machine. Yeah, usually you got your hand smacked for touching that stuff. Put yep. your finger in it. <laughs> I mean, if you want to. <laughs> but Wheeze my the my <laughs> wheezing the juice, nice. <laughs> but my FMK is the same as Joe's exactly. Yeah. All right. I'm with you. I got to go uh, Mary Pizza Hut. Ooh. Wow. Hill Domino's. I'm, I'm kind of with you on that, too. And uh, fuck whatever the third option was, because I was Little Caesars. Caesars. Little Caesars. I feel like oh, Domino's, yeah. Yeah. though, the barbecue chicken pizza, like they have perfected it. Like Interesting. Yeah. Never had <laughs> it. Mm. Sorry. Detroit's like the home of these franchise <laughs> pizzas. Like we had Domino's. We have, we have Jets, is which now is in the Midwest. Yeah. Hungry Howies, Little Caesars are all from what? Detroit. God mm. damn. Yeah, it's Taylor, crazy. What's uh, what's your? You want to know my hottest take? Oh, hot take. Is that I think pizza is just okay. Like it's I'm, I'm not like a huge pizza person. Mm. I don't think that's as hot as you think it is. Yeah. Well, excuse me. <laughs> um, <laughs> I will. You know what? Just for that, John, I'm going to get a little Caesars. Do it. I'm going to uh, fuck Pizza Hut, marry Dama, Dama Hose. Okay. Mm-hmm. Have you ever had the crazy bread? I have, yeah. <laughs> but you know what? I had it later in life and everyone's like, oh my God, crazy bread's so good. And I was like, this is it. I just mm-hmm. had some the other day. It's delicious. It's what? Just like butter and Parmesan on like breadsticks. It's, but- yeah, it's fine. But the dough is made fresh every day. That's the difference. Yeah. Is it? It is. Every day. They got the, actually the dough machines in the back. Trust me. Yeah. I worked at Domino's for way too long. Never made dough. Came off of a truck. The shit was old as hell by the time we got it. But doesn't Subway also bake their bread fresh every day? And it's like. They do, but it's actually technically, I think, more plastic or it's considered it cake in the UK because it's got so much sugar in it. Yeah. And it's made out of yoga mat material, apparently. Sweet. Load them up. Carbs and yoga mats. Mm. Disgusting. <laughs> it's like soaking time. a hoagie roll in water. <laughs> so many words in that sentence people don't understand. <laughs> <laughs> well, speaking of water, and uh, before we start to wrap this up, we are at our oh, already? episode. <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, at some point. Well, I mean, we haven't even played uh, Mole King Bingo yet. I mean, uh, how can we end the night? It's true. Caitlin's going to lead us on that one. Is that a thing we do? No. <laughs> the fuck out of here. <laughs> Making that up. If 
if you if you've been playing along at home, Joe's been confused by every fake segment, so he's got the bingo. <laughs> I got called out for a meetup. <laughs> oh. Yeah, you put it all together too. It's crazy. <laughs> I no. still haven't given anybody details, and so we're gonna circle back to this. You Open know the bar, Simpsons. Bro. The thing from The Simpsons where he's like, yes, that is the joke. That's what I wanted to react to Joe Charney's on Am I putting a 5K together that someone else is going to take credit for? Make it a 10K. We're doing a full uh, half marathon, actually. So let's get into some Critter Corners. <laughs> oh, yeah. Every week, critter Corners. What Critter I do we have this week? So there's no real Critter in this one. There's like, a threat the of frogs. Eh, not really critters. There's a fake cat that gets thrown at somebody. Mm. Also, not really a critter. It's fake. Okay. So I'm going to go smaller. Okay. And let's talk about some microbiology and corpse water. Mm. Corpse water. You ever it's like imagine the, how it tastes being dropped into a well with a bunch of dead bodies? Didn't that like, happen at that the hotel, shit. the Cecil Hotel? Yeah, the in Lisa the uh, water her, tank. Yeah, her body was up there, and people Ooh. drank the water. Yes. Yeah. Oh God. Ugh. What? Charnus is confused. Explain. Yeah. Caitlin. What is this? So the Cecil Hotel, mm-hmm. uh, which is a famous hotel in Skid Row, Los Angeles, it's been the site of many a crime. Richard Ramirez apparently was there for a little bit, mm-hmm. but Elisa Lamb was it like five, six years ago now? Lisa a young Lowe. woman. No, it's Elisa Lamb. <laughs> Elisa, Elisa Lamb. Uh, this is sad. This is really sad. We shouldn't laugh. Um, but she had an episode, um, like a, a mental health incident. She climbed the water tower on top of the Hotel Cecil. She fell in and she drowned and she was missing for a long time. Oh, my God. And people were drinking that water. Residents showering of the hotel were the showering ice. in it, drinking in it or drinking it. Wow. And um, yeah. Huh. I mean, there's got to be some sort of filtration system before it's going into your... <laughs> what year was this? How long ago was this? This wasn't like, like, like six years ago. Oh, well, everybody like, had a Brita by then. When, so In your hotel yeah. room? Yeah. <laughs> it was also like a pay by the week kind of hotel. A lot of people yeah. were living there. Well, uh, if I don't you're know drinking how... the water at that kind of hotel, like honestly... <laughs> honestly, you deserve corpse water? Yeah, I mean... There's a good documentary on Netflix. Is. There is. It's really good. It's very sad. But... Mm. We interrupted. Joe, you're talking about the well water. There are two floating heads in it. Yeah, I mean, corpse corpse water in general. Uh, everybody gets grossed out by it. Turns out, probably not as bad as you think it is. Huh. If the, especially the older the corpse is. Sounds like someone's in the pocket of big corpse. Every yeah. year. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> all I know is Tell I us got how good bodies for you behind is, me in this, uh, in this Yeah, this bluish green yellow pink mm-hmm. color I feel like this is oh, like I mean, what's no, that commercial for like uh high fructose corn syrup where it's like the mom like <laughs> yeah. you know in moderation it's not that bad for the kids. <laughs> no it's basically just like sugar yeah <laughs> you know you can drink three gallons of corpse water a day and it's not gonna affect you any more than that you're fucked but three so, gallons you're totally fine corpse water Both? better or worse than like lake water oh better Okay. Oh, what okay. about yoga yeah. mat bread? Yoga mat bread? Yeah. Better. Okay. Really? Okay. What about Diet yep. Coke? Worse. Okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, at least we have rankings, so. And none of these are scientifically actually true. Okay. Um, other than the sense that the older the corpse is, the actually the less likely it is to actually hurt you. Mm. Most of the time you would get an E. coli infection, and that's typically from the gut disintegrating Mm. out through the bowels. Joe Charners, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. And (laughs) Joe Charners in the house makes some noise. Gut biome. My my 40s, I've had my prostate examined. I'm aware of (laughs) things. I'm actually really offended. I've had the most colonoscopies here, and you didn't even call on me. Hmm. Wow. They're mole colonoscopies. Like, I don't even know what the scale of that is at this point. Molinoscopies? <laughs> <laughs> Molecoscopy? Don't like that. No. <laughs> oh. God, no. 
Well, it turns out that the older the corpse is, the less likely it is that you could get sick. So, huh. kids, drink up that corpse water. Chug a chug. Can't yep. wait. That is the official Wicked Wild salute to your health. All right. Should we, I mean, before we wrap, should we go around and just say, like, all the political affiliations that the Wicked Wild supports? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want me to rattle them up? <laughs> what, what, what organizations we sponsor and donate to? <laughs> See, that's the ones fair. we agree with. <laughs> In the name of transparency, I say go for it, Charlie. <laughs> Here's why Florida's not that bad with some of the rules. <laughs> Joe DeSantis Char News over here. <laughs> you know what's scary? I went to uh, Costco yesterday and like their oh. book rack. Oh, cool. like, oh yikes. <laughs> I'm like, <"Ugh." laughs> but these muffins are cheap. Those chocolate chip Great cookies muffins. are delightful. I don't understand why you have to buy two packs. Like, can't you just let me like if you're going to force me to like walk up front, get told by the cash register guy that I'm an idiot and have to walk all the way back and pick up another one to like get what I'm paying for. Like just get a bigger pack and put them all in one. Like stop doing Ooh. what you're doing. Costco. That's my stance. Really? We don't have that at our Costco. You don't really? Just, yeah. You don't, the only things you got by two of are breads and bagels. Bagels. The, I just had that similar experience yesterday, but the, the, the muffins, it's like, Oh, the muffins. Did you this here? Okay. Yeah. Tortilla because chips for here. Yeah. Oh, it's really? Mm -hmm. Huh. That's insane. Why is Costco? I mean, I get the bulk thing. I get it. Yeah. I mean, but, but if you're going to do bulk, get bulk packaging. Don't just, you know, I mean, three you know, pounds of coffee. I'm in. Yeah. For those at home with a daddy kink, you guys both just got like a lot hotter. <laughs> oh, I mean, if you think that's sexy, just wait, wait till our Costco podcast comes out. Oh, Costco cast. John, I'm in. <laughs> it's funny I mean, you say that. Because the meetup is at Costco. Costco <laughs> Food Court, man. Sponsored by Costco. Like, <laughs> Kirkland we, Brand. Weird aside and very true story. There yeah. was a girl I dated. She was like, yeah, the last guy I dated, he t he took me to a weird place on a first date. I was like, oh, I can't be that weird. What was so weird about it? He took me to Costco. And oh. I laughed in her face. I was like, I was like, you're joking. I was like, that's hilarious. I was like, no. She's like, no, it was real. But it's oh. so good. I would love that. <laughs> That's like a nice, like, I mean, looking back, if I was in my early 20s, I would be embarrassed. Uh, but like, if like you're in your 40s now, I'd be like, that would be like the perfect date. Like, let's go walk around 20s. Costco. Have you had a Costco hot dog? They're so good. Oh, I've had my fair share of them. And their pizza John, for someone who's not a big fan of pizza. Very good. John, what was it like going on a date with somebody that was clearly married? <laughs> <laughs> She was she was all right. I think she was just a little, <laughs> little disappointed. I didn't put out fast enough. <laughs> she was all right. <laughs> she so, right. sounds like a uh, more of a uh, Buffy than a than a Muffy. Mm. Yes, definitely, definitely. But yeah, Costco podcast. I'm way in on that. Yeah. You go through the sale paper every week. Absolutely. Or, uh, no, well, it's like every month. It's like about a monthly. Yeah. But. Well, every week they have different things. Um, and I do on TikTok. I follow a couple people that do like at costco this week and like they have their their hot finds that's uh yeah kirkland sweatshirts that say like kirkland signature are very hot big, right now. yeah I, I, I can't go that far i yeah john um, i've been the same and i've argued with my wife i'm like once you step into buying your clothes at costco you, you're taking i did buy just like a plain black t-shirt yesterday to see like that's fine like five bucks i'm like well let's see how this goes it's not like, the costco okay, flag elitist. on your on your yeah. shirt you're not it's like you show up to the softball practice and they're like that dude loves himself some costco that's a bit yeah. much well yeah. no i'd be like that fucking is awesome rep or don't get out of here i mean you got to be in your 20s to pull that iron irony off yeah i'm sorry yeah, that's, i'm not that young. i don't believe in irony I'm that's just some believing. brooklyn shit right there <laughs> now do you glare at somebody you see walking down the street that has a bj shirt on oh the BJ's is trash see, compared see, to Costco, right? I mean, like, that's, first BJ's. that's below Sam's Club, if we're no. being honest. They, I was they in college okay. when I had my first. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, hey. High school into college in the summer. It was know. a long BJ's. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we should wrap this up, right? Like, Probably. An hour. I think this is the best episode yet. <laughs> I mean, easily. But, I mean. And best, best it's also our last episode. So, wow! Fortunately for everybody, we we want to say goodbye. 
and say your uh, your your final goodbyes to us. You can find us on uh, on Twitter at Wicked Wild We Are, mm-hmm. and on Slasher, same thing. I don't even know what the fuck Slasher is. I'm assuming one of the three of you set that up because this is the first I'm hearing about it. Huh? Joe Char News, I'm looking at you. That, that's the face of somebody that was on Slash. where I, I post our meetup info on Slasher.com. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. Between that, the 5K, the half marathon, and the 10K, I mean, Joe's signing up everywhere. Joe, it's actually slasher.edu. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> .org. Yeah. .gov. So. .org. E. A. Um, you can find us on YouTube. This will be on mm-hmm. YouTube. And yeah. uh, every get to see our beautiful faces looking mm-hmm. better. And I, I will say this in the real, like the truest thing I've said, probably all episode is we will look better tonight than we have in any other past episode, except for you, John, you, you, you get I'm to pretty, be I'm, I'm, every, you're keeping the consistency, pretty even yeah. keel. You know, the it doesn't good. change. It looks good on you, bud. But Caitlin, Joe, like you guys brought your a game. Like I, I love it. I have been working out, so I'm glad somebody noticed. It shows. Just like that um, Neil Diamond shirt. Love it. Caitlin, Mo Queen, do you have uh, what do you have for us for your final campfire tale? We are gonna be looking at dumb cryptids. Hmm. Dumb can, cryptids. Can any of you name one? No. Can you name a cryptid or let alone a smart cryptid or a dumb cryptid? I don't know. Are you guys familiar with the skunk ape? Yes. No, what is that? Oh, shout out, John. Well, I guess you'll have to tune in to find out for our very last ever. It's, it's Stinky else. Bigfoot. That's oh. all it's just, in a swamp. Spoiler alert. Wow. It's, it's the Swamp record Bigfoot it. that smells. <laughs> that was somebody's nickname in high school. <laughs> <laughs> oh, miss that guy. Dear Lord. Well, Jeff, thanks for, uh, for hosting as always. Appreciate it. Yeah. You know what? Um, I, I do it because I want to get away from my wife, Michelle. Um, you, you say that frequently. Yeah, I do. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So find me on, uh, on, on, on grinder at wicked wild. And, uh, <laughs> wow. The wicked wild grinder, I think would clean up baby. I think that the notification would be a buzzing. Yeah. It's wicked wild we are, but with a big capital R. Mm. You just <laughs> reminded me, I forgot all about this. But uh what is it, slasher.com or whatever it's supposed to be used. A while back I registered whackbitches.org. <laughs> just in case or with a plan? Just, we were watching the housewives and one of the housewives, I think it was Atlanta, made a whackbitches.com like joke. And I'm like, it'd be really funny if that was available. And it's it was, but it was like 2000 or something. But I always thought it was funny, whackbitches.org, of like an organization of whack bitches that got together. And they're like, this is ours. Like, come on, guys, we got to get together and really unite. Yeah, it's a nonprofit. Uh, yeah. So you can find me it. at whackbitches.org if you're looking. <laughs> Uh, to join. Nice. Sorry, Joe. <laughs> oh no, you've nothing to apologize about. That was amazing. Perfect. <laughs> I miss derailing a horror podcast. <laughs> <laughs> do you know? <laughs> well, luckily we do this every week. So <laughs> well, and on that note, for uh ourselves and all of our listeners, a reminder from the Wicked Wild to please. Stay lost, stay wild, but not so wicked. And we may change our ways. In fact, I, I think we're going to be less of a wicked and wild podcast, more of a, uh, uh, a nice and neat. Mm-hmm. We're going to be a yeah, benevolent okay. and tame instead of wicked and oh. wild, benevolent, tame podcast. Ooh, what what should be the first what movie we cover? Wicked Ooh. mild. Hey, <laughs> you guys into Hallmark? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Hallmark. hey. <laughs> The transition from horror movies to Hallmark, it's it's not bad. I'll I was tell gonna you. Say, it's probably not that hard either. <laughs> I mean, I am single and a little desperate. Hallmark <laughs> might be my new zone. Joe, yeah, is it working for you? John, I got I got a, I think I got a podcast you might like. <laughs> I listen to it, oddly enough. I appreciate that. All right, let's let's end this. <laughs> 
All right. Yeah, put a Good night, everybody. Thank you for listening.